I'm so close to finishing my super secret project, but I just can't seem to get this launch angle correct. Oh, it's hopeless. I just don't know enough about physics. I suppose I'll watch TV instead. This time, things take an unexpected turn when I shrink Wizard and Dr. Blue. But wait, it gets even crazier. Before I could blink, I end up accidentally swallowing. Mm. It gets even crazier. This Before gives I me an idea. Welcome to Ryan's world. 2,123, 1,000... 1, I lost count. Oh, Akrat! Oh no. You scared us! What? Can't a hamster show an interest in science? Hmm, I don't know. Usually when you show up, you're working on some evil scheme. Remember last time? How dare you both? I simply was hoping for a quick lesson on the basics of physics. Is that so wrong? Oh, maybe he's right. Maybe we are being unfair. My mama always said that everyone deserves a second chance. Fine. I guess we'll give you a little refresher. Physics, as you'll remember, is a study of matter, things, and how they move through space and time. Yes, yes, movement. That's what I want to know more about. You, the less dancey one, get to it. Well, there's one name you need to know, Sir Isaac Newton. Sir Isaac Newton was a brilliant man who lived a long time ago. He was fascinated by how the world worked and specifically why things moved the way they did. He came up with the three laws of motion to describe what he saw. And these three laws are still used by scientists today. Uh, say, Dr. Ion, I'm really more of a visual learner. Any chance we could go on a bit of a field trip to see examples of these laws of motion in person? Or should I say, hamster? Hmm, well that's an odd request. Absolutely. To the park. A playground? This is child's play. I thought we were exploring physics. We are. There's no better place to explore Newton's first law of motion. Dr. Bloom. You see, his first law states that an object's gonna keep doing what it's doing unless acted on by an outside force. You've seen Newton's first law if you've ever swung on a swing. Notice my lovely colleague here. See how hard it is to get the swing moving at first? That's because it's at rest and it wants to stay at rest unless you act on it with force. Then once you're going, it's actually hard to stop. This is because the swing is now moving and it wants to keep moving. So we have to apply more force. Oh, oh my. All good. Another word for things wanting to keep doing what they're doing is inertia. Okay, but isn't there a law that has to do with launching things? Perhaps rocket-shaped things? <laughs> of course. To the beach. Wait, this doesn't feel right. <sighs> ah, beautiful. This is a perfect place to talk about Newton's second law. Which is? Well, it says force equals mass times acceleration. Or, in other words, the more stuff an object has, the harder you have to push to make it move. Oh, uh, can we get on with it? Well, notice how I don't have to use much force to send this beach ball flying through the air. Watch. That's because the beach ball doesn't have very much mass or stuff inside of it. But when I try to throw this very heavy, very dense bowling ball... <laughs> Interesting! So, uh, hypothetically, if I were to launch a rocket, I would want to make the rocket as light as possible, so I wouldn't have to use as much force to accelerate it into the air, where it could rain doom on all of the unwitting... I mean... Uh, forget I said all that. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, who said anything about a rocket? Doc, I think Packrat is up to something. Dr. Bloom, come on. 
Didn't you say something about second chances? All right. Uh, anyway, tell me, isn't there a law that has to do with rockets? Yes. I think it's time we discuss Newton's third law. Yes, yes, get on with it. Well, Newton's third law states that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So when we jump, we push on the ground, but the ground pushes back on us with the same exact force. And when we launch a rocket, the force pushing down is the same force that pushes the rocket straight into the sky. And there you have it, Newton's three laws of motion. Gosh, I've sure learned a lot. And I hope we've answered all your questions, Pack Rat. I also hope we made the right choice in giving you a second chance. Oh, indeed it has! Because I'll be using this information to finally complete my super secret, super evil project! A rocket that drops water balloons on the VTubers from above! <laughs> oh. Pack rat? <laughs> oh, you, you, what? I think you may have forgotten Noon's third law of motion. What? No, I haven't. What do you mean? Ahem. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. You're going down, Pack rat! I knew you were up to no good, so I called for backup. What about what your mom said about second chances? My mama also said, fool me once. Shame on you, but fool me twice, shame on me. Here's your second chance. I see. Very well, I accept your terms. It's war. Okay, while they're doing that, let's recap with a pop quiz. True or false, Newton's first law states that objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Hey, uh, Dr. Bloom. Anyway, the answer is true. Objects tend to keep doing what they're doing. Just like how these water balloons keep moving through the air until they hit something or someone. And who said science had to be boring? <laughs> well, we'll see you next time. Stay curious. And stay dry. Unless you're Dr. Ion. Bye. Bye. Hey guys, let's play some games together. Whoa. 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 Apples are falling. What? Wait, why do apples fall down and they don't go up in the sky? Good question, Ryan. Do you know about Sir Isaac Newton and his law of gravity? No. Can you tell me about it, Mommy? Of course! Sir Isaac Newton was born in England on January 4th, 1643. His parents hoped Isaac would be a great farmer like his dad. Oh, you're going to be the best little farmer. But as little Isaac grew up, he wasn't interested in farming. He loved studying and going to school. Isaac Newton, Isaac, are you here today? Oh, present! Oh, it's great. Have a seat. He did so good in school growing up, that he even got into Cambridge University. You aced the test, Isaac. I'm gonna put in a good word for you at Cambridge University. Cambridge? I've always wanted to go there. Splendid. Mom, I'm off to Cambridge. Isaac Newton spent a long time at Cambridge University. Not only did he go to school at Cambridge, he even become a professor. Okay, class. Today we're going to learn about mirrors. Mirrors reflect light. So if we use a concave mirror that reflects light at an angle, I have a theory that... No, no, no. Not yet. Oh, right. Okay, now can I show them my telescope? Yes! Oh, brilliant! This is my reflecting Newtonian telescope complete with mirrors! Unlike lenses like those other telescopes. And it's the best way to reflect an image because it uses a curved mirror. <laughs> Isaac Newton discovered that curved mirrors can be used to improve telescopes. Yes, yes I did. Those other telescopes would create a, a chromatic aberration. 
That means a rainbow effect. Is that what you kids are calling it now? Well, yes. These colors, these um, rainbows, they kept showing up and I had to solve the problem. And I did, but then I had to understand the problem. <laughs> Isaac Newton's studies led him to figuring out lights and colors. One day he was sitting with the prison up to a window and then... Hmm, I wonder... The prism projected a beautiful rainbow. Wow, all those wonderful colors. Oh. Oh. oh, magnificent! I've, uh, I've got to write this down. Isaac Newton was the first to understand that when you bend white light, the rainbow is revealed. Precisely. I figured out that prisms don't color light, they bend white light to reveal the colors. The circular color wheel become the model for many color systems that we use today. Even after all of his mm. research and discoveries, Isaac Newton wasn't finished yet. Hmm. That's enough discoveries for now. I think I'm going to take a nice nap by this apple tree. One day, Isaac Newton was hanging out under an apple tree when an apple fell on his head. <laughs> What was that? An apple? Did someone just throw an apple at my head? Isaac Newton was curious. He wondered why things fall down instead of falling up into the sky. Why do things fall down? Why doesn't everything just fall up instead of... Oh, I think I feel another discovery coming on. Newton discovered a force called gravity. I will call this gravity. Gravity is a force of attraction between a smaller object and a bigger object. The Earth is our biggest object. This is why objects fall down. Oh, gravity, gravity, gravity! Wait! Isaac Newton was on the edge of another breakthrough. How does gravity affect an object's motion? Good question. Hmm. Aha! I've done it. Isaac Newton came up with three laws of motion. Law number one. An object in motion will stay in motion. Unless another object acts on it. And an object at rest will stay at rest. Unless another object acts on it. <laughs> is called inertia. Yes, it is. That means that things like to keep doing what they're already doing. Law number two. Acceleration of an object times the mass of an object equals the amount of force it will move. For instance, do you see these two spheres? Yeah. One is smaller and one is bigger. And when we apply the same force to them, one goes faster than the other? Precisely. The bigger an object is means the more force will need to move it. And the smaller an object means the less force will need to move it. And that brings me to my final law. Law number three. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, if I throw this ball into the wall as hard as I can, it will stop it, right? Oh, I don't think that's a good idea. Ah. Ow! Ow! Oh, the ball bounced back and hit me in the head with the same amount of force that I threw it. So the ball hit you with an equal and opposite force you used. Just like when you threw it at the wall? Yes. So you understand all my laws of motion now. Ah, and I think that's all my discovering for now. You all take a quiz while I go ice my head. Wow! Sir Isaac Newton became one of the most famous and influential mathematicians and scientists ever! 
Let's see if we can remember why. Question number one. What kind of telescope did Sir Isaac Newton create? Is it A, the TAR telescope? Or is it B, pizza telescope? Yum, 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 yum. Or is it C, reflecting telescope? Did you guess that the answer is C, reflecting telescope? Question number two. Sir Isaac Newton used a prism like this to understand what? Is it A, he used a prism to understand the case of french fries? Or is it B, how white light refracts into colors of the rainbow? Or is it C, Sir Isaac Newton used a prism to understand different kinds of dinosaurs? Did you get the answer right? It is B, Sir Isaac Newton used a prism to understand how white light refracts into colors of the rainbow. How cool is that? Question number three. What is gravity? Is it A, a force of attraction between a small object and a bigger object? Whoa! Or is it B, is gravity a continent? Or is it C, is gravity a fish? Did you guys guess the answer? It is A. Gravity is a force of attraction between a smaller object like me and a bigger object like the Earth I'm standing on. That's why when I try to jump, gravity is pushing me to the ground. The end. What do you think, Ryan? That's so cool. I can't believe he came up with the law of gravity with just an apple. Let's see if gravity still exists. Ooh, it does. Bye. Remember, always stay happy and rise up. Bye. Whoa.